Selwyn College, Cambridge. Um, I'm from North London, Enfield. What's life like at Cambridge? It's really, I really, really enjoy it. It's really jam packed. Um, so you're doing things back to back often. But the one thing that I love about Cambridge, which I think may, I want to say maybe doesn't exist at other universities, is just the sheer amount of things that you can get involved in. Um, there's and how you have to balance your extracurriculars with um, your work. I think it's, it's a really kind of healthy environment to, to balance things and to also, so for example, in my first term I was in a play, um, I wrote for the newspaper, I did campaigning um, with the BME campaign and the women's campaign. There are so many kind of things that you can achieve in such a short space of time that when you finish term you think, okay, that was great, but now I need to re-energise, re like what am I doing next term? Uh, next term I already know that I'm doing a play and I'm also going to write for a student um, newspaper as well. So that, just the sense that everybody is on top of their game all the time, it, it makes you feel like when you're not doing anything, you're like, oh god, okay, maybe I should do something. Maybe it's, it's such a kind of um, encouraging environment to do whatever you, you want to do. And that's something that I'm really proud of. I'm proud to say that going to a university, to a university that has that kind of atmosphere. But when I say I go to Cambridge, people say, you know, do you walk around in black tie all the time? Do you do just these kind of stupid things? And I'm like, no, the students, we have a kitchen and we cook. It, it's it's um, a lot more normal than people think um, it is. And there are normal people, but however you define um, normal. But there's also, there are, there's a culture of um, privilege at Cambridge, and I have to say that, and I'm always honest, there is, but the more people you, we get from diverse backgrounds, the better um, represented they'll, they'll feel in this space, and the more they will feel that those spaces are their own. I always say, like, if, if Cambridge is going to claim, or Oxbridge in general is going to claim to have students of the highest academic ability, they have to show that those students come in a wide um, and diverse range because right now it's it's predominantly dominated by white males and to argue that white males are the smartest people in the country is, is a fallacy so I'm all about getting people from diverse backgrounds um, into Cambridge. I think I went in there with a kind of level-headedness and an awareness of of what I was going to face because obviously I'm from London um, there's the diversity in London is something that I'm forever grateful. So I, was, I wasn't I was that shocked when I went out to Cambridge and sometimes you're the only black person in the room or the only black person in the hall. I'm the only black female undergraduate at my college. And that, that can sound really stressful, but it isn't because everybody's lovely and there are all, there's kind of, at my college especially, there are spaces to voice any kinds of concerns. So just, just an example, our, on our JCR committee, our um, international um, rep and our BME officer were the same person and I sent an email saying that's ridiculous you need to separate those roles and next time I'm going to go and talk to um, the JCR committee and see if we can actually do that so there's always there's always things that you can change so yeah I think I went in expecting it met my expectations but it also exceeded it it was a great term where the best I had the best time so. Cambridge um, wasn't wasn't, I didn't see Cambridge as a possibility um, until I got good GCSE results and good um, A-level results and I, also I had uh, loads of teachers who gave me support and kind of sat me down and said you have to do this no matter if you think it's a waste of time or not. Because I was aware of it, I'd gone to um, conferences, I'd gone to access stuff and I, I still kind of thought oh there's really kind of no point in applying, I won't get in, I'll just be a waste of um, a uni space but I had people around me who sat me down and said seriously you you have the potential to do this so don't don't doubt yourself so much and I'm so glad that they did because now I see that that attitude <laughs> was not helpful <laughs> I know for myself that I put a lot of work um, into the grades that I got so I worked really hard I made copious revision notes I did all the reading I was in every class because I, I always had that kind of mentality I've always been like um, I want to show people the, the best that I can do. There's, to me, there's no point in doing something half-heartedly or, or not trying your best. So um, I've always tried to do that. And it's, it was all, also coming from a school where there was a strong kind of academic competition. 
I was head girl, so and I went to an all girls school, so all all we do is kind of raise each other up, and there'd be games in the class, and we'd be like, okay, I've done this essay, have you done this essay? And it, it's nice to be around people who kind of are focused and know what they want to do. It's really kind of reassuring, and it makes you raise your game as well. I did quite a lot uh, while I was at school, so I was head girl. Um, I got the Jack Petchy Award, I was given a Governor's Award, um, and I recently just went back to school actually for an achievement cer ceremony and I was given the school prize for sociology and the head teacher's prize for um, achievement. Um, so yeah, and I think that all of that came from kind of trying, being really eager and enthusiastic to do loads of different things. I was always the first to kind of put my hand up and say, let's do this assembly, let's talk about this, or let's mentor, let's... Yeah, I, I'm really kind of, I like to get involved in different things, it's really fun. I've always been someone who likes to talk to people and who likes to kind of exchange ideas. Um, I, I, I'd say that the whole idea of like being a leader or um, putting yourself forward for roles, I've always done since I was little because I can talk. So um, I've always kind of been class monitor or, or been the leader of a group and that's kind of translated into the things um, that I've done while I was in secondary school and also now that I'm in uni as well. I think one of, one of my proudest achievements is being head girl and being able to represent my school because that was, I'm so passionate about, I, I went to a school called Enfield County and I, I'm so passionate about the teaching that I received there and all the teachers and all the girls there and the kind of safe environment that we created so I was, I'm so up for talking about how great my school is and it gave me a, a platform to kind of interact with my peers in a different way because when you're head girl not only do you represent the school but you you talk to people about what they like to change and I, I think I got most of my year started off with feminism and it, it was it's now really exciting to see where they, they're all taking it because I will see them and they will say you know I never thought about this stuff before you started talking about it and it's really it's really good to see people wake up and and start thinking critically about things so that's what I'm most proud of. Talk to me about some of your other things, such as Barbie Busters. Why, what is Barbie Busters firstly, and why did you feel the need to bring that about? So Barbie Busters was a kind of mini campaign that we did in school to um, make young girls aware of issues about self-esteem and body image. And I did it because I'm a feminist and I, I'm really kind of, what interests me women's lives interest me and I, I'm kind of interested in how we see ourselves and um, what our, how we derive our own self-worth and I think that comes on a lot from the messages that we get um, from media and stuff like that so kind of we set up um, Barbie buses as a way to kind of counteract that and to have that discussion about what does it mean to fully believe in myself or how do I define beauty or what is beautiful and stuff like that and it was, it was really fun to see girls for the first time think critically about the messages they've been receiving about their own bodies. It's, it was really, it was, it was a great experience, I really enjoyed it. What's happening with it now? Um, it's, been, it's being carried on by people um, in lower years, we, we check in on them and see how they're doing. Um, I think they're making, they, they're going to do it every single year. Um, for all of the girls, so start them off in year seven and see how it progresses from there. But I'm glad that it's been carried on. You've also done some work in the LGBT community as well, and that's what some days which gets share a bit more about that. Um, so we did a couple of assemblies on LGBT rights because again that's something that I'm really passionate about and something that I think is important. I'm a, I'm a kind of like I'm a social justice warrior in the worst kind of way. So the, the assemblies were again um, in a similar way to Barbie buses, getting people to think critically about the way that they treat people and to kind of um, enlighten people about the history of LGBT rights and where um, the kind of their kind of systematic oppression comes from. Is it derived from law? Is it derived from social attitudes? Um, and that again was really fun. We did uh, some smaller kind of classes about it. We did a big assembly and it was focused on um, the Russian Olympics and how Russia has treated uh, gay members um, of its country, etc, etc. It was, it was really fun again. Is there anything else that you've been involved with that you're really proud of you'd like to share? Um, well, at, now at uni, um, 
we I've gotten involved with the BME campaign, which is the Black Minority Ethnic Campaign, and right now we're setting up a blog called um, The Brown Girls Guide to Cambridge. Because once once you get there, there's an acute awareness that this is historically not a space where people who look like you have been. And so what we're trying to do is carve out our own kind of little um, niche, and that's that's something I'm really. Uh, happy to be a part of. And also I've, I've done lots of campaigning with the Women's Campaign um, down in Cambridge which is a really really good organisation which is very very inclusive. Cambridge's um, application process I'd say in terms of when you compare Cambridge and Oxford, Cambridge is a lot more relaxed in that you send in uh, your, your personal statement, you send in your application through UCAS and you wait to see whether they give you an interview and Cambridge interviews 80% of its um, applicants. So if, you're, if you've got the grades, what, what they really look for is high UMS scores in your A-levels. Um, so if, you, if you've got that, then the chances are you'll be given an interview. And the interview process, I, I initially, coming from a state, com a state comprehensive in inner city London, and also coming from a, um, a family where people had gone to university but no one had ever um, gotten into Oxbridge, I ha everybody has this kind of notion that um, interviews are extremely difficult and they just drill you and they don't want to hear what you have to say and they kind of or that there's a specific way to do things and that's not true I found my interview to be well, I had two interviews and I had to do a written um, essay as well I had to also send in some of my work but I found my interview to be really really fun and really engaging the first one um, was just about books that I've read that I enjoyed and she, it's a conversation between two people who actually genuinely care about a subject and there's not many times where you get to have that kind of academic conversation. So I, I'd say to anyone thinking of applying, definitely do it and don't be scared off by the whole interview process. They literally just want to know what you think about what, what, whatever um, source material you're given. and. They're, they know that everybody comes from different backgrounds and they're equipped with the kind of the language to help you. So the toughest part was feeling like in my second interview I was given a poem and we had to and my interviewer who's supervising me next term actually which is really funny. Um, he he gave me this poem and said make make sure you have something to say about it when you come in. So I was given a kind of a really ambiguous poem and you go in and what they essentially did was navigate me through this um, text and say, what does this mean? What, what does this mean? And obviously there were points at which I thought, I have no clue what this means. I don't know what this means in this context. And you kind of, when you leave the interview room, those are the only parts of the interview that play in your head. So for me, I found that really difficult to kind of forget that the interview had happened after it happened. <laughs> because you just, re you replay the mistakes in your head. And you think, oh, I should have said this instead of this. But really, it's not a difficult thing to go in and say what you think about something. It's not hard. The most enjoyable part, the most, the part where I felt most that was most familiar was when I did the essay because I I did English literature at, um, at A level and A two, and it, I, I was used to writing essays. I was used to comparing texts. So in that sense, there was there wasn't. Uh, an incredible amount of pressure because it was something that I was I practiced and I was well versed in, so I can I can definitely write a good essay. Knowing what you know now, if there was any advice that you could give yourself about the whole application process or anything you've done, what would it be? Do Why? not doubt yourself because you you can totally do it. And I think that attitude also comes from um, it, it's it's quite a common attitude in state school children. They cut because. If you're from a school which is which does um, Oxbridge, which sends many people to Oxbridge and do, is well versed in the um, interview process and kind of puts you through this rigorous training, you go in there with a certain confidence that you know this format, you know what you're doing. And if you, if you've never had that before, there's a kind of there's always a second guessing and a self doubt, and that's one thing you need to erase definitely know that you, if you get an interview, you're worthy to be a student there.